day has finally come. It's October 1st. Fingers crossed we can make something happen in the next couple days here. Been battling these past two days. Well, 2024 season was here. We were ready after 2023 with good luck and a lot of good bucks that ended up making it through the winter. We, we had good hopes. So we did a lot of summer prep this year. We stripped the whole woods from all of our stands that we had back there and we started fresh at the drawing board. Trenton wanted to try some new things out so we moved a lot of his stuff around to begin with and once he started moving stuff around it got me thinking hey, maybe I should move some of my stuff around and see if we can get on these deer better and uh, give us a better opportunity. Reset the woods, cameras are running, got a lot of nighttime pictures to begin with the first few weeks, and then daytime pictures start rolling in come August, and we're feeling good. We, uh, in particular, we're looking out for this one buck I named Pironi. Never had an encounter with him whatsoever in the daylight. Never had a daylight picture of them, just nighttime pictures here. And Trenton had his camera three, 400 yards north of mine, and we finally figured out the loop that he was making. Middle of August rolls around, I haven't really got any big bucks coming in, just little guys, and I finally get a couple nighttime pictures of this buck. And what really stuck out was his kicker on his left brow tine. I'd gotten him every couple nights for the next two weeks, and I don't really know where I got the name Clyde from, it was kind of a joke at work. I'd shown my, my, uh, one of my coworkers the picture of this deer, and he's like, well, what's that, Clyde? And uh, right then and there, I'm like, I'm going to call him Clyde just because of that. So in the first week of September rolls around, still getting this buck every, every couple nights, waiting for anything bigger to show up, anything different, you know. And finally, I think it was the first week of September, Pironi shows back up. Um, I've been after him for two years. I've only gotten nighttime pictures of him. Never have I gotten daytime pictures, never seen him in person. No one's ever seen him in person. He's been this nocturnal buck that me and Trent and the neighbors have all gotten nighttime pictures of, but never seen him in the daylight. With season approaching, we were, we were feeling really good. Um, Trent and I, we'd get together every, every week or two, shoot bows, go over deer. We were driving around scouting just doing everything we can to get the best knowledge about these deer before we go into the season. And so I wasn't really hunting that hard the first two weeks of October uh, with work. I was real busy and it was hot. It was dry. We didn't have any rain from the end of July. Uh, basically up until then, we didn't have any rain. Well, the day has finally come. It's October 1st. It's about 3.30 right now. Just got a uh... Just got set up into this new spot. Got permission on this summer, so. I've been getting a lot of activity through here throughout the day and night, so. Hopefully we can make something happen. It's gonna be a good year. So that third week, of October rolls around, and just like that, all the crops changed. Farmers were hammered down in the fields. Uh, beans were getting taken off, corn was getting taken off, and probably by, I'd say, around October 20th, basically all the fields around us were empty. All these deer, they love hiding in that corn, and they'll go lay out in the beans in the day, and it's like all their cover's gone. So basically it gave me motivation, all right, let's get out in the woods. These deer are going to be wanting to move along field edges, fence rows, thickets. They're going to do anything they can to stay in that cover.
so that third week rolls around, temperatures are starting to drop, the pre-rut's starting to kick in, so I knew it was now was the time to get out in the woods and see if I can catch any of those bucks moving early. And I probably went two weeks straight of just seeing does every night. They'd move right, right, last 15 minutes of light. So I took the first half of that week, took a break from hunting, kind of got everything around for rut. I knew it was coming up. Next cold front hits. Uh, I decided to go out, and sure enough, 4.30, Clyde steps out in the woods. That next weekend rolls around. I'm scrambling all over, sitting in different spots, moving spots, trying to figure out where I can get on this deer. And Sunday morning rolled around. Here he is. Here's Clyde chasing a doe across the field at me. He'd ended up coming into about 80 yards, maybe 70, and just stood there. He ended up following that doe. That doe ran across the field, never seen him again. And I'm like, okay, I got to be in here tonight. They're going to want to come back. They're going to want to bed in here. Had a really good feeling going in the evening sit. Evening sit comes by, never see him. So November 6th, 7th, and 8th, I had taken off work. Trent and I agreed that if we're going to go out during these days we have off, we're going to make our time worth of it, and we're going to sit all day. So that Wednesday rolls around, morning sit. Here comes Clyde. Comes by at 40 yards. Didn't have the camera ready, didn't have my bow ready, nothing ready. Surprised me, come out of nowhere, no more than 10 minutes later, here he come by again. I'm like, okay, he's gonna use this trail. I had everything ready, had bow in hand, camera going. I knew exactly what trail he was gonna come down and I was getting ready for him. And he got right behind this tree and ended up taking a different trail, going out at 60 yards. Thursday morning, we're back out in the woods. And here comes Clyde again, doing the same thing he did the, the night before. So he ended up rolling by at 45 yards again through the thick stuff, never could get a shot at him. And then he'd go sit out at 80 yards. And I'd sit there and watch him for an hour and then he'd disappear back in the woods. It's probably 10.30 and here he comes, rolls back by, same path, 50 yards, couldn't get a shot. And he went and laid down with a doe out in the middle of the woods at 100 yards. And I sat there and watched him for three hours. And after that three hours went by, that doe got up, he got up, followed her right back in the woods. So going into Friday, I was pretty tired. Those 12 hour sits, they really, they're really tiring on you. They, they're tired on the body, even though you're just sitting there, you're exhausted at the end of each day. So I decided to take Friday morning off, get some stuff done around the house, take a break, get a mental break. Midday Friday, I went to my new spot, grab my saddle, take my saddle down. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna set up in this tree. It's 30 yards closer to where he's been coming out. I should be within 20 yards and he shouldn't, he shouldn't know I'm there. So Friday afternoon rolls around, we get out early. It's probably 1.30 by the time I'm set up. All right, well, it's November 8th. It's just past two o'clock. Changing things up back here tonight. Um, sitting probably 30 yards from where I usually do. Fingers crossed we can get a buck down tonight. He ended up standing from my blind 30 yards for 10 minutes. There's no way this deer knows where I'm at at all times and is basically teasing me right now. And so, after that last encounter with him Friday night, I was, I wasn't happy. I was, I was pretty bad at myself. I was getting pretty down. Like this deer is knows I'm here. He knows what's up. He's just not coming in and everything was frustrating. So I'm going in Saturday morning. Like I, I can't do this much longer. You know, I've been sitting, I think 40 hours that week and uh, going into Saturday morning, I think I was at 80 hours in, in three weeks. So I'd put in some time in. Saturday morning, it was beautiful. It was 26 degrees, heavy frost on the ground, no wind, clear skies. I'm like, okay, it's not, a, it's not a bad morning whatsoever. Sun's starting to crest the horizon. I can barely see anything around me still. And I'm looking off at these, these deer making noise in the woods, and I'd heard a stick break behind me. And I no more than turned my head, and there he is, 30 yards from me, broadside, walking past me. And... By the time I had gotten my bow and swung around, he was already he was already gone. He was already at 60 yards. He was must have found a doe. He was he was fixed on that. Nine o'clock rolled around, still wasn't seeing anything. 9:30, I'm like, all right. I'd brought my black rack with me. Haven't used it all year. 
what do I have to lose at this point? So grab the black rack out of my bag, hit record on my camera just in case, start rattling them together. No more than 15 seconds rolled by, I'm still rattling. And here comes Clyde running out of the woods right for me. I'm sitting there, I'm at full draw, and I kept leaning back. I'm like, ah, oh, that's a tight shot. I had branches everywhere, and then I finally found a spot where I got settled in. And I'm like, okay. Followed up back leg, let the arrow fly right where I thought was the perfect spot. Watch the arrow coast all the way to him. Watch the arrow disappear, and then he ran off. And judging by watching that arrow, I thought I'd shot right over his back. The way he ducked and turned and ran, I was like, there's no way I just hit this deer. I just missed him. I was on the phone with Trent for a good 15 minutes or so talking about it. And he's like, well, it happens, man. You know, kind of feeling bad for me, trying to make me feel better, lighten up the mood because he hadn't been seeing any deer. And uh, he, uh, he, he told me, it. all right, get down from your stand real slow, have the arrow knocked in your bow, binoculars on you, and just slowly creep up to where you shot him, see if you can find your arrow. And... Uh, I know more than get 20 yards down from my tree and I'm glass in the woods and not even 40 yards from where I had shot him. I see a belly up in the woods. All right. Well, judging by the footage that you just saw, you just watched me smoke a buck. Judging by what I saw, I thought I missed him. But ended up getting down, found my arrow, and, uh, no more than looked up 40 yards and he's dead. I made phone calls, dad, a couple buddies, and I walked up to this deer and I was just like, man, it really happened. I really did it. And it kind of, kind of hit me in that moment, but it still was setting in where it was like, I really just did this. And I was pretty excited. So I ended up having some of the boys over to come look at him and kind of sit there and BS around for a couple hours and just soak up the moment. Rifle season's coming up. Season ain't over. I still got a tag to fill and there's still bucks out there. So hopefully we can get back at her here in the next weekend and we can get something down. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and catch you guys in the next one.